everybody for coming out tonight. Um, this has been designated a uh, Carpet Dish Night Family Night. And uh, this is about the five or the fifth one we've had this year. And basically, it's no meetings. And hopefully, uh, what if I see the award? We'll carry on next year. Jack and, but uh, the ninth has uh, been for me because it's. Uh, this night has been designated uh, a martial arts night. And it's my school that will be putting on a martial arts demonstration. Now this is a Canton Wing Chun Kung Fu school. And we're located or based at Paul Church. My, uh, I won't be doing anything personally. I'll leave it up to my uh, head instructor, Bob McDonald. And he'll take over at this point. <laughs> Instead of blocking force on force, he would redirect flows. He would be soft and fast, but have power. And she uh, learned this slowly. She developed it from also watching animals. And you may or may not know, she was out in the woods one day and saw a white man and snake fighting. She liked the way the snake moved the center line. Uh, it struck. It was uh, to the point there was no uh, flower movements involved. She just went right into it. Okay, so uh, I'll explain about that later on. And she also adopted some crane techniques into the system. Okay, from uh, Moy, she taught it to uh, Yim Yi, who in turn taught it to Yim Wing Chun. Okay, Yim Wing Chun is the one that uh, uh, her husband became involved in the system and the head of the weapon. Okay, after they uh, worked on the system and as it as the outset is an art. Okay, in the beginning there's a big idea and it's been coming down in time. And each generation it has uh, become more and more controlled and better and better. People have had time to think about it and uh, really hone it down to a, a fine art. Everything's clearly uh, very effective. Okay, uh, then when you trying to thought it to uh, Hong Kong Sao, her husband, okay, he incorporated the weapon. Then they in turn taught it to Wong Jong, he taught it to Wong Vic, who taught it to uh, Yen Kei San, who taught it to our Sijo, which is our grandmaster, uh, Song Long. He lives in the province of Canton, hence Canton, Wing Chun. He's the uh, oldest living generation of Wing Chun, who is our master, our grandmaster. He taught it to Pokemon King who lives in uh, Hong Kong. He's our uh, Seagull, which means our master's master. Okay, and he taught it to Chen Ming Li, who brought it over here. Chen Ming Li is our Seagull 
techniques at the outset before I have to start are a series of sound basic techniques which are very simple but very effective and when we get right down into a fight we use the basic techniques. Okay, uh, David, uh -huh. uh, David is showing the basic stance, the training stance, this is not our fighting stance, this is a training stance to develop the legs. Okay, as you can see, his knees are a fist apart and he's cone shaped. Everything's symmetrical. The center of his universe is right in here. That's the center of your balance, center of your power. Okay, it's like a cone. As you can see, if I push him from any direction, he's balanced. Everything's lined up proportion. We shift through this technique, which we'll see later. Okay, in comparison to this to, say, cat stands, which other systems may have. They're strong from the front and from the back, but when you push them from the side, either side, they just go, okay? Um, from the front bow stance, a lot of systems use this. Very strong from the front, they fight from the front. Very strong from the back, they wouldn't want to get caught from behind, but it's very strong back there. And again, off balance. The low horse stance. See, all these stances are flashy, but they are ineffective. Okay, again, side to side. Very strong. Frontward, not too bad. Backward, no good. Okay. Uh, so the Wing Chun stance, as you saw it, uh -huh. they're lined up proportionally. The elbows back, they're soft. They don't have any tension in their legs. This is a, it's a very difficult stance to learn from the outset. It looks maybe easy for you to be standing there, but I guarantee you try to do it the first time because it was five minutes. Okay, and as I said, we shift through that. So uh, David will now show uh, Cerner and Sal. Okay, this technique, as I said, we're center lines, so we fight from the center of our bodies. And our elbows are lined up in the centers, and we control the center line, which means the straightest point. If I were to punch somebody, the straightest point would be from the center. Most people punch from the outside. This technique is used to develop the forearms and the snap. You also work on your chi, your internal power by trying to keep your muscles as soft as possible, but having the maximum force. Okay, Tang. Choi Ma Wing Chang. Okay. This is the punch, the center line punch. As you'll see, he's originated out of the middle. He's coming up, you can hear the snap. Okay, it's a very powerful punch, Tang. Um, like I said before, it's from the center straight out. There's no dilly-dallying around. We don't put any telegraphing into it. We don't make any noise. We just punch. And again, he was doing it from a training style. It's not from our fighting style. Our fighting style, as you'll see later, is uh, quicker because we're not coming way back here. But to learn to punch, you have to start from back there and learn to flow your force out. Soft, the force does flow out, penetrates through somebody. When we hit somebody, they're not going to fall 10 feet back. There's some flat right there. Forward, the shock of the blow, just put him right down. It's not a pushing, it's a punching. And he came from the center, his elbow was in the center, we got the immovable elbow. Uh, we fight from the center and control. Uh, it's very effective uh, against anything. There's nobody getting inside it. Okay, Lamont. Okay, he'll now show you the shift. As I said, we go through the basic stance, you'll notice it does it real slow. You'll see him go through that training stance from side to side, left and right. And he can turn very quickly without having to move his feet. You know, he doesn't have to turn and spin around like that and waste time. He's in balance all the time. And this teaches you movement. It develops the legs, teaches you how to flow from one point to another. And it's very, very effective. We should be able to get on a very stiff surface and fight. 
not lose our balance and not lose any power. We don't brace our legs for power. The power is just there, it's soft. Okay, come on. The next technique uh, David is going to perform is Jun Sun Chen Choi. This technique is a turn body fist punch. It's very, very powerful. It's delivered after you've had initial contact to really penetrate. As you can see, he shifted. He put his hips into it and everything. Very powerful. Flowed right through it. Very powerful technique. Okay. Hips. Okay. David's going to show you uh, the tiger tail kick. This is an advanced kick. Again, it's designed after you had an initial contact. <coughs> That kick is used uh, against a strong force coming at you. You're not going to stand there facing. So you're going to move to the side. The principle of Wing Chun is to avoid solid contact. Uh, it's very powerful. It doesn't take much effort, but you'll be able to fight all day, <clears throat> maintain contact. Okay? William? Come on. William will show us the center line kick. As you can see, he comes up to the center of his body and kicks out. Powerful kick. The center line kick, the principle of the center line kick is again, control the center. We don't want to throw our legs out and get hit the groin or anything. We want to control the center with our knee and kick. It's a block and kick at the same time. It's, again, we don't make any noise. It's straight line. We, don't, we rarely kick above the waist. Rarely. We have our hands for that. We fight in very close. That kick would be used in very close when a lot of systems couldn't even stand it. They had to back off the kick and just deliver a solid blow at that point. Okay, uh, Andy. Come on. Andy's going to show you the wing chun side kick. Don't you? See, as you can see, he's not turning his body very much. And his kick's coming forward, his foot's turning sideways. Very effective kick. Very deceiving kick. Thing. Most systems you'll see when they kick, they come up and throw a side kick out that way, okay? They turn their body, they telegraph, they extend too much. Our side kick, as you just saw, we stand there and face them and throw the kick. It's not the same as the front kick, it's delivered a little differently. Intricacy you won't be able to pick up, but it's a very, very powerful kick also. Uh, we stick with our legs. We may block the leg and go on the side kick. We'll see those techniques later on. It's just a sample <coughs> kick. Okay, uh, Ivan. Come on. Ivan's going to show you the Wing Chun Roundhouse Kick. Okay, the Wing Chun Roundhouse Kick, as opposed to the karate kick, like that, as opposed to that, he'll do the Wing Chun Roundhouse kick. Okay. As you can see, he faces the corner. His leg comes up to the side, but it doesn't flip way out there and stop. It ends up with a front thrust into it. It's a blocky kick. Okay. Yeah. Now those are just our our hands on our basic kicks. Okay. Next, I'll have the, the techniques demonstrated by all the students. <coughs> okay. I want uh, Jenny, Mike. <coughs> Face each other. Law. Okay, we're going to do a Lon Sao Che Choi technique. Okay, I don't know how much you do the technique. What will happen here before they start is it's it's designed for a high blow to the head. Somebody punching somebody in the head. It's a high block. Okay, as you can see, Ivan's controlling the center here. He shifts his body just a little bit. The punch is directly to the center. And we, another thing I want to point out, man. Okay, we block and strike at the same time. We're 
you need to any other system? No other system blocks the strike at the exact same time. Come on. I want you to note this. Most systems do the one, two, <coughs> clock, party. We do it at the exact same time. Go cheap. Same time his hand touches her wrist, his blow would be to her head. He would actually be a little bit closer. And he is with the moon. There's no telegraph to it. Time. Yeah. Okay, uh, William. Okay, they're going to demonstrate Wusau Bilogy flying fingers with a block at the same time. Wusau is protect hand Bilogy's flying fingers. Bochi? Again, he's controlling the center, and his thumb will be striking the opponent's eyes. Bang. Yeah. He blocked at the same time, and his thumb is to come out and just burst the eye. Or he could use his fingers to the throat or fingers to the eye if he had to. I want to stress that we don't keep rigid fingers. Anytime you have any part of your body rigid, you're not soft, it breaks. If you like hit in the skull with a rigid hand, you could break your hand. So it's hard to just kind of bounce. We're a soft system, we use internal power. Uh, everybody has this power. You'll see at the end of the demonstration how we develop it, but uh, I want to point out the opposite that everybody has this power. This is designed for a medium flow. Again, as you can see, the ship, he's controlling the center, he's closing the person up so that they can't hit him. He's blocking and striking at the same time. Bang. Designed for flow in this area. We wouldn't go up here and drop it down as we had to. We would go right out to the center of the flow there, very fast, very effective. Okay. Jim, Jeff. I want somebody to adjust that. Come on. Okay, Jim and Jeff are going to perform lops out Chet Choi. Grab hand, fist punch. Okay, uh, Pochi. He's doing it from the inside. Control in the center. He's trying to come up here and just touch it. Okay, do it from the outside. Pochi. He's doing it from the outside. As you can see, when they were in the inside, they opened the person up and were hitting them. From the outside, they're closing up over here so this hand is ineffective. Deliver the blow. Okay, the next technique will be guns out here, Joy. I want uh, Ivan and Jenny. Face each other. Lama. Guns out here, Joy, is a low block. It's to a punch to the groin area, the low midsection. Okay, I don't want you to check. Okay. As you can see, he's sinking. That can be done through kick also. He's moving the area targeted away, and he's blocking his hands, keeping his arms in the center, opening run. Tang. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. David, Andy. The next technique you'll see is lean out. There are three versions of lean out. Volume sound. Pochi. This is a very soft technique. These are full force punches coming out. But it's very easy to block. You can tire somebody out that was punching you very easily. Volume sound. He's blocking him in on that one. This one he's blocking him out. Again, controlling the center, closing the arms so he doesn't stand a chance. Donning sound. He can do it with one hand, with no effort.
Okay, what do you mean? Now you're going to see combination techniques. Come on. This is some fun style. Can you show me? Oh, cheap. High, low, medium. Just flowing from technique. Also, William is doing some sing joy. When we go in to fight somebody, we don't always punch in the same area, which nobody should. So we have punches for all the areas. That's what William's doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, those are the basic techniques. too much and your hand gets bruised, and we apply this medicine and it takes the bruise away and the next day your hand won't hurt. But we try not to do it to a point where we hurt ourselves. Uh, that's not good training obviously. So we gradually going to develop a snap. And this is called the jowl and our seafood makes it. It's an herbal medicine we apply by rubbing on. Okay, next we'll see uh, exercise practicing the Wing Chun grip. Downing's little idea. It's the first form of Wing Chun, emphasizing the use of the hands. It's a not a long form, but the idea is often to control the snap and the power. Okay?
Does it make movement? A crane movement. That's how she's designed it. It was to the center. Not fancy. We're not flashy system. We're, we believe if you're going to fight, you fight. You don't. Okay, Jenny is going to show you some of the snake moves from the first form. Okay, I'm just going to punch her for her chin, and she's going to do snake moves. Okay. Now that might look similar to Ling Shots in the but it was a lot different, believe me. Once you get into Wing Chun, if you were into Wing Chun, thank you. Tell the difference between techniques. If you notice, the elbow is in the center, and you just move forward side to side. And again, I don't want that uh, punch to deceive you. You'll see later on how powerful it is. Okay, the next thing that we've done, Andy will perform Chum Q. Okay, Chum Q means crossing the bridge. The bridge is your forearm. When we fight, you'll see we touch. You want to get in this range before you attack. Stick your arms. And I'm going to start with that here. Give me just go up there until we make contact. So the contact is the bridge, OK? This, as you saw in your flyer, incorporates the movements of the hands and feet attacking. We don't have, we don't jump. We don't, our feet don't leave the ground. That takes a large step. We try to maintain our balance all the time. And you'll see this in this form. Okay, this protector, of course Andy's not going to give him a full force punch because it would cause some internal damage. Uh, actually, 
padding like this against a full force wing time punch or kick would be in effect because the power goes through it. It's not a push, so the power just kind of goes through like a sound. Okay, so he's going to punch him, but it's not going to be hard enough to, to injure him internally. And this has uh, rods going down through it. It's not just. Okay. Now you can see an application like suppose you've seen a lot of fights. You know when somebody says something about fighting, they come up to somebody and say, you know, come on, buddy, let's fight. You know, back in high school days, you know. That's a lot of That may not even happen nowadays. They may pull a knife or something, but we uh, were a little more honorable back then. Okay. So. Suppose Dave went up to Andy and did that. Okay. That was a double fist punch. He could also apply a blow to the head, okay? And take his head off. Okay. It's a very effective system. You control the center and once that happens, it's over with. Okay, that's good no one. Okay? And the punk kick. He didn't deliver the kick because he didn't want to do a lot of damage. But as you can see. That's one of the rare times we go in. And we had control, again. He had control of his arms. He could kick him there and just lay his hand up in there if he wanted to. He wouldn't kick him and he's just showing you the control we had. Close in, not many systems can fight him. Good for that. Okay. Do you want Okay, suppose somebody throws a kick like this at you. That's your basic karate side kick, okay? As you can see, the crane movements are blocked with the hands very easily at the same time you kick him in the groin. Side kick, you know, side kick. Okay, pull that down. Lock the screw at the same time and move in. That little kick thing that you saw in the form. Very effective. There's no nine cents distance. Everything is two points. I'm just going to show you some movements that would knock somebody or take somebody down as controlled as possible. Okay, I suppose it went through a side kick at you like that. I don't know if you saw that, but he hit him twice and he got his knee in his groin when he landed. Match? This is the match? Okay. Very effective system. And that's really a big punch in case you ever want to show you a little variety. But that's just too much chance. Okay, suppose somebody throws a front thrust kick at you. Alright, You just deflect it to the side, move in in triangle. We fight triangularly. We don't move in on somebody straight on. We move in at an angle. It's deception. And he threw a series of punches. Okay. Okay. Suppose somebody came at you with a low blow that sounds like a boxer. Okay. Again, he stepped to the side. Not giving him time to retaliate with a punch. The only punch he could possibly do from over here would be across, and I just turn around and back, and he says, "Gone." Okay. Suppose somebody did a fake cross. Okay. The tonsil technique you saw earlier for the series of blows to the inside, blocking the outside. That was the high one. The high block. Okay, now they're going to blindfold. One fighter's going to be blindfolded. Right. Show you control. And remember, we're crossing the bridge. What he's doing is, he's judging distance. These are full force punches you saw earlier when he just snapped it into him and moved him. He doesn't know where he is. He's moving in. Once he feels him, he stops his force. We don't pull our force back, okay? We don't punch out. Okay. We don't punch out and hold it back like that. We just punch out and stop. Good. So as soon as if we want it, that's why we don't wear a lot of pads when we spar. The only thing we need is protective cup. 
Yes, you actually want to go too far this. <laughs> but uh, once we get there, it just stops. Okay? The force is there. We don't pull it. If you pull it, you slow down, your force doesn't flow from your body. Okay, you can do okay, come on. Okay. They're doing one hand look sound. This is a training technique. As you can see, it's a series of blocks and strikes that shows control, touching sensitivity. David feels his force and flows with it. He doesn't knock it away, he stays with it and controls it. This is the bridge that I was telling you about. The two arms touching. When you engage in a fight, when you touch, that's the bridge. They're training various techniques, working on their shoulders, their backs, their forearms, their softness, flowing. There's a lot of work here. However much force Andy uses, David comes back with. This is not fighting, this is a training attempt. Okay, two hand. This is two hand look out, using two hands. Two hand sticky hand. Sticky hand means once they make contact, they stay with it. They flow together. See, in Wing Chun, you can do things blindfolded because it's not scientific or anything. I mean, it's not uh, exotic, I should say. You know, I can come through the see guy hang out like that, catching the flow coming to the head and near it, and you know the guy was there. We have to make contact. Okay, once we make contact, we have enough control that we control the force coming in on us, no matter how hard it is. We don't block it, force on force, it's left to the side, as you can see. Control and sensitivity is very important. It also develops shoulders of power, pain. Okay, now they're going to do that two-hand chi sao. Chi sao is fighting. From there, they're going to do trapping techniques. As you can see, David's eyes are shut. He comes in, he controls his blows. He trapped his hands. And Wing Chun, we trap. Trap hands against the body, we trap to the side, so he can't strike us. And then we deliver our blows for a wall of trapping. Very effective, Okay. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, the trapping is very effective. Uh, we strive to trap. When somebody grabs somebody else's hands, most people don't know what to do. We not only control the hands, we move wherever we want them, using their force against them. Very effective. Okay, next, you'll see uh, the Seven Star Man Sword. Now, at the outset of this, I want to explain, we also teach as a matter of aerobics uh, and uh, to learn how other systems fight and move, just on the side, other weapons, so, such as Seven Star Fighting Man Sword. Uh, it's not a part of Wing Chun. But it's to help us have a better understanding of our systems. And we also have people in here from many other martial arts systems that we fight against on. So we're well rounded. <laughs> okay, this is Seven Star Man. Okay.
Jeff is going to demonstrate the center line wing tongue and front press kick. The, the basic one you saw earlier. snapping that blow from just there to there. I'm going to perform a series of the same techniques on the wooden men. Won't quite know them. Okay. This is a training device. It's made out of a uh, and it's got just a little layer of uh, shoe sole leather around it. Up your snap and your power. Touch your arms to take blows. Hopefully, it'll be directed, but that's the purpose. That's the move on. Okay, I'm just going to perform the seven star man of staff. Again, it's an aerobic learning experience from another system.
To show that we also teach and know other weapons, we're going to have some students come out and just show you a few basic moves all at once to see a variety of weapons. <laughs> Okay. Amy will demonstrate the first preparatory breathing exercise. We call it chi. The Indians call it prana. I think uh, some writers just call it ki. It's, uh, everybody has it. It's developed in the center. Bang. 
Steve will show the next one of this series of those, preparatory exercise. Dave and Luke, uh, will show the first two phone exercises. Are you ready? Oh, Chief. Again, these movements are designed to show a series. Get the oxygen where it's needed to develop the vital body parts. Maybe the second sheet on <clears throat> you. The purpose of these breathing exercises is breathing through your nose on the exercises. It warms the air. So you're going to turn on so it doesn't get cold, you don't get sick or anything. You sink the air. Develops the power and gets the oxygen where you need. Thank you. Thank you. When we fight, as you saw earlier, you didn't see anybody cuffing and cuffing. Or hyperventilating. When we fight, we breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. So it's serious. Where our mouth always remains slightly open. We don't telegraph. Uh, for example, William and I were sparring. And he struck at me. I'm not going for telegraphing, it's just calm. Okay, Ivan is going to demonstrate how the chi is sung. While he does that, I'm going to use the chi kung bar on it. Sink it. It develops the body to. I'll let me say it. thank you, I have to thank you. That builds up your endurance, and so you can absorb the blow too. At all, we don't have to sink it to absorb the blow. You do these exercises under controlled situations on a regular basis, and you should be able to take a blow without having to sink the force or anything else coming. Not all blows, but we're trained to take some pretty heavy blows. Okay, that concludes it. I want, before we finish off here, I want to everybody to introduce themselves and tell how long we've been here. And I'll start with myself. I'm at, you know, Bob McDonald, and I've been in the system for eight years.